35 global hr leaders one sec <laughs> sorry there was background noise okay so we have covered 30 countries and 35 global hr leaders from different different uh, region you know they attended and uh, you know share the knowledge on employee engagement uh, uh, during work from home which is very uh, uh, challenging situation for every one of us yeah and almost uh, 1700 uh, delegate join uh, in each uh, session we had around uh, more than 500 delegates and today also we will be having a similar kind of people and more same number of people <clears throat> and uh, since we are moving to almost you know closing the lockdown in most of the countries so so uh, work from home will be very common activities and in employee engagement uh, would also be kind of you know people will be more knowing more must have known by now in this webinar we try to do it in a different way we thought you know let's let's uh, let's do actual engagement more than you know knowledge sharing so we have invited or rather i would say there was a nomination process uh, for hr people to do the performance so there will be a performance by almost 15 to 17 uh, uh, hr people so these are the hr people hr leader from different different countries you know they will be performing live show on zoom you know so category would be dance singing mouth organ and then you know guitar humor stand up comedian yeah okay coming to hr shaper i won't take much time most of you know you are getting a mail but let me quickly share the schedule how we are going to do it today okay great so this is the schedule it will go like this i'm just sharing uh, i'm just sharing a uh, schedule so we will start with the denny session which will be 435 and then followed by ssl uh, then uh, sumit will uh, uh, will be there from jojo day uh, denny will be joining from qatar uh, and then ssl uh, will be from spain sumit from india trish will from zimbabwe and uh, iti will be joining from israel then last one would be amit from uh, ukraine Uh, so hr shaper is a 6 year old uh, non virtual non register body and some of you might be aware that you know last year we did celebrate our 6th uh, 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 anniversary that was in lonawala so many of you must have the memory of dance singing and everything right uh, we are there in each and every country of the world okay mostly present in india but out of india as then we have well it uh, are people on the call uh, and that they attended the session yes this will be the last session on employee engagement work from home we'll then move to some other topic i let me stop here and let me hand over to naz naz is from uh, jojo day she will introduce the uh, jojo day naz over to you i will stop sharing uh, hello everyone a hearty good evening to all of you hope all of you are healthy and doing good in the comfort of your homes uh it's 4:30 in bangalore india uh the weather outside is um, there's a little bit rain and uh, a good breeze um that's where um covid-19 a nightmare to the global economy now were we prepared for it no was anyone prepared for it at all not at all so this was a time when uh, uh, there was no time given even to realize or admit or accept the current situation uh it just led to companies uh, relooking into their business continuity plans or even overriding the policies just to keep the show going uh we can see the repercussions happening but again it's a phase and this too shall pass uh in fact this crisis has created a level of transparency and trust in our workforce uh, that we haven't seen in decades uh we just need to stay together in this tough times and support each other and then we'll get through this uh, pandemic successfully I'm Naz, and I work as an HR business partner and engagement specialist at Zozo Day. I'm happy to welcome you all to this session, employee engagement during work from home, in partnership with HR Shapers. A little introduction about Zozo Day. Uh, Zozo Day is a SaaS commerce company that has been empowering organizations in building a happy workforce, serving close to 1.5 million users across the globe. uh we've been helping the hrs and cxos motivate their workforce by launching ai based rewards and incentive programs our products impulse plum and compass are being used by organizations 
uh, to drive collaboration, employee engagement, and rewards and recognition programs. Uh, we feel strongly that a motivated employee or channel partner would always go beyond the call of duty and perform better. And this belief would be the crux in the discussion that would be happening. Co-founder of Zozo Day, Mr. Sumit Bilwal, is also one of the elite panel members today. Now, uh, how do we ensure that we keep our employees engaged and motivated during work from home? Uh, sometimes staying at home is quite monotonous and because you don't have the company of your colleagues to cheer you up. Uh, of course, it has its own positives, but uh, we can always make it better uh, and peppy if we could engage our employees more. Uh, after all, the companies who crack the code of WFH work from home in this current times would be the ones that go the extra mile in a slow paced economy. So over to you speakers. Thank you, Nath. So we are exactly 435. And since we have committed timing, so let me say if Deepak Deshpande Fund is there. Yes, Deepak, you are on mute. Okay, we are good. Yes, good. Okay, so so here is the first performance. We'll start with the performance, then you know we'll move to first session, which will be from uh, Danny from uh, based in Kuwait. Okay, let's move to uh, Danny. Danny, uh, so I will just post uh, Danny profile, you know, uh, on the screen there. Okay, here it is, and uh, let me just go to. So Danny right now is based in uh, Kuwait. Okay, so here it is. Just to considering the time, uh, so he's head of people organization and communication. Uh, uh, Nova Nordis is uh, uh, based in Denmark, but right now, as he said, he's in uh, Kuwait. So, uh, Danny, over to you. Thanks for expect, accepting our request, and we look forward to your input on you know employee engagement during uh, work from home. Sure, and uh, thank you for. The invite. Uh, hopefully, I'm uh, going uh, clear through. As uh, you can see, I'm sitting here in the uh, the sunny backside of my yard in uh, Kuwait. Uh, just a quick introduction. Um, I'm uh, covering Kuwait as, as uh, head of HR. Um, that being said, we also cover Bahrain, Qatar, and uh, Oman, uh, including uh, Yemen. Uh, so, as everybody, we've been uh, very uh, very uh, tied down by the COVID-19. Um, social experiment on the world. Um, and I'll, I'll just share through uh, a few exercises and learnings that we've been doing in, in our area um, um, that, that might be able, I, I'm, I'm sad to say that I cannot uh, follow the amazing act of the, uh, the song, uh, but I'll try and share some insights just by wording. And please uh, feel free to um, ask questions or, or whatever. Uh, I know there's a Q&A function here and a, a chat you can utilize. So uh, first of all, what we've been doing since the beginning, which for us was uh, around uh, six weeks ago, is that we started the uh, trainings. We uh, began uh, uh, making very uh, um, uh, rigid, you could call it, uh, trainings for the, uh, for the sales force that we have here. The reason is actually the uh, psychological aspect of not being in routines. Um, I have a master's in psychology, and one of the things that we know uh, from uh, human behavior is that a lack of routines uh, often leads to a lack of engagement and a downward spiral on energy. So uh, what we have done is that we've created trainings based on three major areas, which is some of the core areas that we handle, that is uh, medical marketing and uh, p and questions. So we've done uh, three hours each day uh, in different topics uh, on training. After each week, we do a very thorough feedback from the entire, uh, the entire field force to tell us what do they think went well and what, what could be done better, but also to get ideas on new topics. So one of the first things that uh, we did uh, was that uh, I did a presentation on uh, human psychology during uh, isolation periods. Uh, that led to a feedback where they actually wanted some more information about how the amygdala and the brain functions are. So we did that. After that, they feed it back that they needed presentation skills. We did a little online course on that and so on and so forth. So, so by get, getting this feedback and being very honest and uh, transparent towards each other, uh, I think we've had a chance to, uh, to really uh, get, some, um, get some new ideas going, but also have a, have a chance to, uh, to uh, move that on. Um, right now, we're sort of in the middle phase. So what we're doing now is actually, instead of it being one-way communication where the, the HR and such um, discuss, 
we've uh, moved that over to uh, the individuals, the, the team itself, that they can now uh, have a chance to um, have a chance to present their own stuff. So uh, we have uh, we have people from all over the world working here, and they have had now a chance to kind of present their own topics. Some of them not work related, uh, but that's not important to us right now. The important thing is the uh, is the engagement part. So some of them have presented about the history of their home countries. Uh, some of them know uh, about personal development, uh, these sort of things. And another thing that we're doing on a daily basis is actually a little bit inspired from the Celine market in uh, Japan, where they do uh, exercises on every morning. So we do exercise every uh, three times a week, uh, where we do um, yoga, we do some, uh, some HIIT workouts, we do some... Uh, non-equipment based CrossFit that we have a trainer to lead. And this, uh, this trainer then goes online and, uh, and adds him. And also a way of engaging people is also that we've had the team actually joining in for that specifically themselves, but also joining as trainers, which has been uh, very nice. And then the last thing I would recommend if people are not doing that already is very quickly uh, start in, um, in doing an S-curve analysis on what is the energy level in your uh, specific companies. Uh, that will help you to tell you whether or not you're in S1, S2, S3, or S4 phase. Um, and there's, depending on which phase you're in, the managers especially, the line manager especially, needs to either care more than they're doing already, or they need to reshape the organization, or they need to uh, maybe just flatten out, uh, depending on where you're at in the S-curve. Are you going up the energy levels or down, right? So I think that that's some of the things that we're doing currently and that we've had, uh, I think, uh, quite nice uh, results in doing. Yeah, I think that's it. So like, depending on what kind of questions that are there or uh, any elaboration needed, uh, please feel free. Yes, yes, uh, Danny, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and so guys, here is the first question coming from Dr. Madan. Uh, Danny, you can also see in the chat box. How will the current scenario impact the culture going forward? So let me repeat, how will the current scenario impact the culture going forward? And how will it impact what the co the content, the content of what we're doing or the content of the work or no, the no. content of... Okay. okay, question is how will the current scenario, the current scenario, current situation impact the culture going forward? Will there be change in the culture because of the COVID or work from home or, uh, you know... Yeah, I think... Um, yeah, I think I got it now. Um, well, uh, I think without a doubt, uh, there will be changes in, in cultures all over. I think uh, there will be changes in the company cultures that you're a part of. I believe that that most likely all the speakers will agree on that, 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 that certainly this will have, have a cultural impacts on how we work. I think a lot of uh, different companies, depending on the, uh, especially the size of them, the bigger, the worse. Um, that uh, this has really taught people that maybe all these meetings, all these travels uh, back and forth between different uh, hubs, headquarters, uh, back offices uh, can maybe be, um, well, at least diminished a little bit, maybe not eradicated completely, but certainly changed. Uh, I think, uh, so I think that we're learning more and more that maybe we can do without all these things. Um, I think that also opens up a door for maybe some new areas that is uh, better presentation skills online, for instance, which is uh, going to be a new thing. Uh, certainly, uh, while we're talking about it, uh, there's something in, in, uh, that I'm currently working on myself uh, called visual facilitation. Uh, that is something architects have been used for years where you can utilize the ability to draw. I'm a, I draw really bad myself. But it's not about the, the skill level. It's more about uh, being able to visualize an idea or a or facilitate a workshop or something and doing it uh, for instance via an iPad you can share online um, you can see even this uh, me uh, conveying all these ideas would be better if we actually had a chance to kind of see it on paper and it, it unfolded underway right so certainly I think that will change in the future mm -hmm. okay uh, it's a related question. If you have covered, then you can skip. But uh, the question is coming. You know, will will there be any changes? Will there be any changes uh, in terms of uh, skill set? Like we need, you know, X Y Z skill set in the organization today to perform. Uh, will there be any change in the skill set and uh, approach? Yeah, I think we, from, from what I'm seeing that I work in, we work, uh, currently I'm in the, the sales part of my organization. 
Uh, what we've seen is that uh, typically sales require a lot of hands-on and face-to-face -face experience. We're seeing that that's not possible. So that means that some of these, you could call it the old school um, skill set, may be less relevant uh, going forward. Um, that being said, um, I think that, that, of course, more digital, more online skill sets will be better uh, or more useful, you could say. Um, other than that, I also think that, that some of the, the things that we're seeing, certainly in Europe, is that uh, these may be a little untangible skill sets, that is uh, creativity, for instance, ability to uh, design, uh, ability to think outside the box. I think these skill sets will become increasingly important uh, throughout the years, certainly also for um, the millennial population, right? Um, because I think more and more will be um, AI technology nowadays that, that, uh, that helps with some of these more, you could call it the standard, standard things. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you for taking two questions. Uh, uh, then, it, uh, so there are there are a lot of inputs coming and question coming uh, in chat box as well as Q and A section. So, please uh, pick up. Uh, I would request all of them or some of them. Please keep responding in chat box so that you know they will get the answer. Yeah. Uh, we will go to the next activity now. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, Danny, and please be there. And this sure. is going to be, as I said, it's talent show. There are many performers from uh, different different parts of uh, uh, India or other other. We have performance from Singapore and London also. Yeah. So please enjoy. Yeah. Um, okay. So since it is already 4:50, you know, and we have another speaker waiting. So what we will do? We will take this session, and then because uh, she is from Spain, so. You know, let's take the session and then we'll have two to three performance together back to back. Yeah, so uh, let me invite the third speaker. I am going to post uh, detail of uh, our speaker in chat box first. Yes, so uh, here is the speaker from Spain. She is based in Barcelona. Uh, Cecil, if I am not wrong, I have pronounced properly. Cecil, right? <laughs> Cecil, correct. Yes. Cecil, <laughs> Okay, and uh, she was in Myanmar, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, yes, correct. currently she is in Spain. So, so would like to hear from you, you know, because you are in two different countries and, and uh, like to hear on the topic. What's your opinion and view? Over to you. Perfect. Thank you, Ashish, for first of all, for the invitation. Uh, and hello, everybody. Uh, very happy to be here and be able to share some of my thoughts and, and ideas on employee engagement, especially in this uh, particular situation that we're currently at. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to to live and work in a lot of countries. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm originally from Costa Rica, uh, Latin America, and I worked there. I worked in the Caribbean um, and Miami and Asia, as you mentioned, in Myanmar, and now I'm in Spain. So I, I really have had a, a sense of um, you know how working from home um, has been something that in the past was considered a reward. You know, employees really wanted to have the opportunity at least once a, once a week or if possible once a month to work from home. Um, and this, it was seen as a reward. What we're seeing now is that this is a necessity based on, you know, due to the situation that we're currently at. And um, people are, instead of feeling that this is a positive thing in many ways, they're, they're feeling that they're working more hours uh, because it's hard for them for, to disconnect from work um, even though they're home. And this has caused, and I hear it constantly from different uh, different people, that they feel that the family members are actually a little bit more upset because they would expect that the fact that they're home would allow them to spend more time with them when in reality they're taking calls up to late hours in the evening. Um, they're always uh, working on something, and it's hard for them just to, to disconnect from, uh, from work. Um, however, for the employees, what they're feeling is that they have constant distractions, um, that, uh, you know, they want to focus on what they have to do. And um, at the end of the day, their bosses, in a way, can demand them to be available 24-7, which is not actually uh, good for them. So what, what we want to do as a recommendation when, when you're working from home, especially now, I'm going to focus on three main things that, um, that are good for making sure that we keep employees motivated, is we want to ensure that communication mm -hmm. remains there, right? So... It's, it's very important that we communicate, but not over-communicate. What does this mean? You don't need to have a daily conference call with 
every single employee. You don't need to make sure that you're calling them all the time or blasting emails all day long. Um, if you are clear in communicating the priorities for the week or the month or whatever project you're working on, you're able to actually have, say, a weekly conference call uh, where you have all the team members together and you, you are able to talk about what's going on with the project, whatever the status challenges, etc. cetera. Um, but where you want to have that little human touch is before you start any work meeting, just spend some time checking in on your, on your employees. How are you feeling today? What's going on in your life? Do you have any funny anecdotes that you would like to share with the team on, you know, something that may have happened while you were working from home with your child, with your pet, with your spouse, whatever. Just, just make the call a little bit more human and, and ensure that people feel that you genuinely care for them. Um, I hear this complaint constantly and I'm still you know, talking to people who are working in, in Singapore, in Malaysia, in Myanmar, and, and especially in Asia, you tend to see this much more. And it, there's a lot of pressure uh, for you to be available all the time. And they, they feel that their bosses are constantly on them and not checking up on what's really important, which is, are you healthy? Is your family healthy? Are you okay? You know, what's going on in your life? So, so I would say that this is a big one, um, making sure that you have good communication. Don't over communicate. You don't need to be on top of your employees 24 seven and make sure that you check up on them and, and see how they're doing and do it as a team, right? This helps because we, we, Danny mentioned this about, you know, working together and I believe it firmly as well. People are so used to just being able to get up, walk across the room and ask someone for help. And right now you can't do that, which means that in order to get information, either you have to call someone to get that information or you just end up doing it yourself. So many people may feel that you are doing more than you're supposed to because you're carrying someone else's load. So having that group conversations definitely helps. The other point that I would like to stress on, and I think that it's uh, good for employee motivation, is ensure that you have a reward system. And I'm not talking about certificates and things like that, but it's just say thank you. You know, reward accomplishments uh, individually and publicly. Uh, when you have these meetings with your team, it's also good to, to say thanks to someone who completed a task or a project. Um, if they're doing something positive, if they're going above and beyond, just publicly acknowledge the fact that, um, you know, that they're doing something good. Because at the end of the day, when you are not there to smile at someone, to give them that pat in the back in the office, if, if they don't hear it from you, they just assume that you don't care or, or that it's not important. So uh, that one is, is um, the second point. And the last one is don't forget about employee development or people's development. The fact that you're working from home does not mean that you can't develop yourself. So do spend some time coaching your team, providing feedback on how they're doing, um, encourage them to take online courses. I don't know whether the company has platforms like Coursera or Linda from uh, LinkedIn. You have different options. I mean, the fact that you have people joining webinars like this is also good, right? So encourage them to continue to develop themselves. And this is going to help them feel that you as a company or you as their boss actually care about their growth and their development throughout, um, you know, their, their time in the company. So don't, don't forget those three points. And I think that that will be quite useful for uh, keeping them motivated and engaged. And I think my five minutes are up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. On that. Let's take some questions. Okay. So first question, uh, let me take it, which is uh, very, very challenging. This is coming from Alok Narayan. Uh, he's from Delhi. So the question is related to the productivity. Uh, what he's asking is what could be some practical way to measure productivity for people in support function? Uh, your recommendation productivity, do you come across changes in productivity in various countries? If yes, so what could be causing those? Well, remember that it's 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 always good to have a very specific uh, a very specific scorecard, right? Whatever the the measurement that you use in your company to evaluate employee performance should still be in place. It, the fact that you're now working remotely doesn't mean that you don't get to measure what they're doing. So uh, in order to ensure that productivity is met, if you have a very clear set of um, 
tasks, projects, or priorities that people need to accomplish. You just need to ensure that on a regular basis you're checking up on them. Um, remember that the, the success or the key to success on working remotely uh, is going to be trust in the employee that they're actually going to do what they're supposed to do. And from the employee side, deliver on what is what's expected from you. Um, you know, this this situation has forced companies to do what they thought that, that would never be possible and is actually having a remote workforce. Many companies have uh, avoided allowing people to work from home just because they believe that productivity is going to um, tank, right? So they don't want people to work from home. They want to be able to, to see them all the time, to see how many hours they're sitting at their desk, and, you know, if they go too often to smoke a cigarette or get a cup of mm. coffee, they complain. So the, this situation has actually forced companies to realize that they, they can have a remote workforce and that people can work, um, you know, a, and be trusted to get the, the job done. So in terms of productivity, it really depends on what your company has already in place. And it's just a, a matter of monitoring this on a regular basis to ensure that the, the KPIs are being met and in some cases, there needs to be some adjustments uh, just because you're not there with them all the time. But work with them, with each team or with each individual to, to adjust to the new reality and ensure to follow up uh, regularly. Okay, thanks. So we'll take one more question. Okay, this is a very touchy uh, question which is coming from Uma. What do you advise to address the emotional issue? stress that employee go through due to self-isolation because of the remote working work from home not able to connect with uh, any other people other than uh, uh, family member uh, obviously virtually we are connected but yeah anything you like mm -hmm. to uh, uh, pick up and suggest related to emotional pressures sure um well there's two things to it um one is again the connection that you have um, as a manager with your employees, right, or, or as their boss, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, when, when you get to talk to them and you give them this space, like I was uh, giving an example, if you have team meetings, to hear what's going on with them, you, you then learn a little bit more about them. You know, who's married, who's not, and not because you want to pry on their personal life. You know, obviously you have to make sure that you're not um, overdoing it, but, but that's where you get a sense of what's going on with each one of your team members and for me i've managed very large teams um in the past and again not without not trying to pry on their lives but they just shared their information so you know you know who has lost a family member who you know is under a lot of financial stress and um you know who has uh, marital problems or very difficult children you learn these things, right? And, and the fact that you listen to them and you spend some time with them, if, if they want to talk and vent, um, it's also good, right? Because um, if you can't do it as, um, as their manager, as their individual, do it as a friend in a way, you know, to allow them this, this opportunity to, to share how they're feeling because isolation can be really hard on a lot of people. And, and again, keeping in touch with many uh, former colleagues or former um, you know, direct reports, I've seen the toll it takes and some people are already seeking anxiety medication or depression. You, you, you can see that some are struggling to even get out of bed. So it's very hard. Now, some companies do have employee assistance programs where you can actually have Skype calls or virtual calls to, um, you know, where someone can have some uh, therapy assistance uh, and this is something that if the company has it in place is, is tremendous and it works quite well um, but other than that if you feel that these are not very difficult psychological problems that you are not capable of handling yourself just spend some time with them and again the human touch show them you care you genuinely care for them um, it makes a world of difference even if it's just a weekly call as I said or maybe twice a week whatever you want to do but having a person that calls you and checks how you're doing if you need anything how you can assist them it makes a world of difference so i understand that the level of stress may be different um and again it depends on your personal situation but um but being available for them and, and showing that you care helps them a lot in managing the stress um, that they're going through i hope that okay. answers the question thank you yeah. yes yes but yeah, there are a lot of uh, questions coming in. Just pick up from the chat box and uh, you know keep responding.
because we need to move the the, the next one. Uh, sure. In, in yes, sure. there are now back to back performance because we just uh, you know continue with two knowledge sharing session and earlier one kept on hold. Yes. So thanks, as I said, that was so nice of you joining from Spain. Thank so, you, uh, thank you, a pleasure. Look into look into Q and A and chat chat uh, messages which is coming there. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. We'll do. Okay. So, so I'm here now. Let me start with the first performance now, which was supposed to be done earlier. So I hand over to Vinay now. Vinay is from uh, Bangalore. Vinay, you need to just introduce yourself. Uh, not not long introduction, but you know your uh, company name and designation. Okay, and what you are going to perform. All right. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. Yes, yeah. Just keep the time limit. Take nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Ashish. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Ashish. And uh, yeah, hi guys. My name is Vinay. I uh, work as an HR and admin manager for a company called McFadden Digital. It's a, it's an MNC uh, here in Bangalore, and based out of uh, US Vienna, US. Right. And uh, I am a full time HR and a part time comedian. I uh, take you know take part in a couple of uh, you know stand ups uh, in Bangalore. And uh, do participate in corporate uh, standups also. That's about me, Ashish. I hope I <laughs> I am keeping the time in check. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. So let let me start start here. Right. So um, uh, I hope everybody is is having fun with the lockdown. Right. Uh, all right. No, nobody answered. So I I assume that's a yes here. So the same here. I am also having fun. Maybe khub maze le raho. Right, I'm I'm watching my favorite channel on the TV. My favorite channel is Nick Jr. Just like you guys are having fun with Nick Jr. Right? See, I can't imagine I uh, you know my life and my official calls without Nick Jr. Uh, it it is it is absolutely by default that if Nick Jr. is running, I can have my official calls, including the one which I'm having right now, which is unofficial. Right? I feel my son gets supplied oxygen through Nick Jr. If he does not. See Nick Jr. He cannot survive. It looks like that, <laughs> right? The 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 other day, uh, I I heard my TV praying that uh, when would it, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, get infected with coronavirus so that at least that way it can quarantine and uh, put itself under isolation <laughs> to save it from from Nick Jr. Right? And I I think uh, you know I've tried all all methods and ways and. Uh, Frankly speaking, I've tried changing the channel also, but you know what kind of answer I've got from my son? My son says, "Dad, the the ads are as important as the serial which follows the ad." Now that that is quite a statement, right? So uh, very very recently, with with regards to the ad also, right? I've I've noticed that <clears throat> uh, you know I've seen Virat Kohli losing you know his his interest as well as trust on Boost because he. I have seen him coming onto the Boost ad every 15 minutes and saying Boost is the secret of my energy. He's lost energy, man. Every 15 minutes, he cannot come down there, right? And I've also noticed this this very unique thing that have you ever noticed or have you guys noticed this that you would never see a Whisper or a Durex ad on a uh, Nick Jr. or any of the kids channel because that's basically you know unethical. You really cannot ask people about that. That would attract public outburst your channel might be blocked you know it's it's like that channel uh, that advertisement mocks at you that i told you i am important but you changed channel so all having said that uh, now i'm very eagerly waiting to see uh, you know when 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 i would you know hear this that my mera beta bad to raha hai but badega kab that's all from my end guys and uh, you know thank you everybody for listening to out me and thanks ashish for uh, getting me on here have a nice day Yeah, that was so quick and the short one. Okay, yes. we may come back to you. Please be there. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so we move to the next performance. Uh, thank you, Vina. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. So we thank move you, to Ashish. next performance. So here is the gentleman who's from Bangalore. Yeah. And Winston, we can already see him uh, holding the guitar. And uh, so, so yes, please introduce yourself and what you're going to do. Give us a surprise, Winston. Sure. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Winston. People call me Winnie. I am the head of HR with an agro tech company called Clover. Uh, Clover is in the farm space where we are helping during this time. We are actually 
helping with the movement of fresh vegetables and fruits in Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Ashish. Very soon we are going to be in Mumbai. We have next performance from uh, from from Singapore. She is supposed to uh, rush in next uh, five ten minutes, so we'll take it from her. I'm moving some people uh, back and forth, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Sumit, uh, we will go to the next session after. I mean, uh, your session after this performance. So, let's welcome Baljit Chawla. Baljit Chawla, based in Singapore. Baljit, uh, would you like to do the introduction, quick introduction, and then uh, please let us know what you are performing on. Hi, uh, I'm Baljit, and I handle compensation and benefits for Asia Pacific for Avaya. I'm based out of Singapore. um i love to talk like all the hr people so when ashish told me come let's talk so i'm like okay oh, that's easy i will come and talk so um i'm sure like uh, everyone else uh, um like me all of you have uh, net watching netflix is your latest hobby right so i have been watching this series uh, arabic series called fada uh, on netflix which is, which means chaos and i realized that my life has become a fada after this lockdown has emerged with me working from home my kids uh, doing home based learning from home and uh, my husband also working from home so i have been working from home from like 10 years but i have never worked from home with my entire family working from home so um, here i am right uh, my kids classes start at 9 am and we all know the importance of 9 am meetings so i am very excited the first week i'm like good now the kids are uh, settled with their computer online classes and here i am trying to give a presentation to my leadership team strategy for 2021 shit i mean you just entered 2020 and i'm already making strategy for 2021 can someone rewind it anyways and this is uh, with all business leadership team right and you know how important comp and ben the topic is and suddenly my uh, kid comes running barges into the door and says uh, mama what is that uh, uh, and see murphy's law my kid just ran in with uh, so uh, he asked me um, that uh, what is that green and uh, uh, red uh, that uh, that thing that tubes that go inside your body one which receives signals and this is in nervous system one that receives signals and one that uh, uh gives signal back and i am standing there uh this is a video call uh, hr as usual business expects that you are supposed to know all the answers and i have no answer to this one and my r&d leader smiles from behind and says uh, tells my son uh, baby it is uh, neural circuits uh, sensory inputs take the signal inside from your brains and take it back from your motor outputs and uh, i smile my son gives me uh, this look with you know like mom really you have no answer and you are the boss of the house you don't know this much and you keep telling us that you know you were the topper of the school and in my mind i am thinking for the for the for the chaos and this chaos has to end quickly so that's my small uh, um discussion whining of a working mother in covid times working with family from school from home sorry see imagine what's going on true true so so uh, that was baljit guys okay and uh, let's appreciate you know uh, there were a lot of nomination and you know people have come forward and uh, this is not easy to perform you know in uh, this way and uh, you know some of them they have done lot of reels all you know so let's appreciate okay on the screen performance may be outstanding good okay but yes let's appreciate the effort and thank paljit joining from singapore okay please be there till whatever time you want to be yeah okay so yes now performance can wait let's move to some knowledge sharing okay so here is the gentleman sumit is from zozode let me post his profile so full name is sumit khandelwal is the ceo of zozode Uh, we were hearing till now. Okay, yes. So here is the Sumit uh, LinkedIn profile. You can visit right now. So Sumit, over to you. Uh, thanks, Ashish. Uh, thanks, uh, everybody else uh, who have been there. Uh, hope I'm audible, Ashish. I'm yes, audible. Sir. Sure. Yeah. So thanks so much. Uh, and uh, it's been uh, it's 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 quite uh, uncertain times, and uh, I'm sure each of us are really facing uh, this for the first time in our lives. Uh, a couple of thoughts and quick ones which i wanted to speak on uh, was uh, 
uh, I think one of the key thing uh, for us uh, when we look at managing people is how do we ensure the highest level of communication going in. Uh, the best way to solve a lot of these problems uh, which people are facing and keeping your employees motivated is communicate. Uh, the communication has to be across multiple formats. Uh, it should be what's happening in the organization. People sitting in their home are also worried, reading news about a lot of firing here and there. So what's the business going on? Is business going fine? What's the economic scenario? Uh, as leaders, we know that uh, we are more aware of what's happening in India, what's happening in global market. So can we communicate that, right? Can you communicate that with a regular frequency, which brings in a lot of comfort to the employees and this comfort really helps their job is secure. The other thing which I thought uh, is meaningful in these times is something we call it as in the organization, you get a pat on the back. Uh, a pat on the back is something which is very simple to do when you are in, uh, when you are in the office, uh, you just complete a meeting and just do a pat on the back. This really becomes difficult. Uh, this really becomes critical uh, when uh, an employee is sitting in his house and you don't know, uh, and a lot of these employees might be in a small space uh, with uh, less uh, resources to work on. At that time, they, they wait after giving a, a good presentation to get a pat on the back. So is there a way that we can really ensure and give that pat on the back, make a social recognition a lot more easier? Use simple tools, uh, use simple tools, be it a WhatsApp, be it any messaging system, so that you make that employee feel that you really done and you've really been able to give in your best effort to make work for the organization and then you receive, really receive a pat on the back for that. Uh, the other initiative uh, which makes it meaningful in these times is uh, each of us are going to multiple stress. Uh, stress could be for multiple formats. It could be uh, because communication is so often happening. Uh, a lot of times uh, your uh, some employees gets their manager reaching out every day. At that time, it's very, it's, it becomes even more critical for you to look at identifying simple means and it should be online yoga sessions, it could be online meditation and some simple modes where you could actively engage with your employees. Uh, this really makes them feel that you're just not speaking about productivity performance, but you are also thinking of are they able to sleep well, are they able to find a comfort and these really gets in a lot more value. The last point which I uh, thought uh, might be a uh, uh, might be simple step which can be done and I would want to also share some posts of what's happening within our organization is uh, let employee do some specific uh, share some happy moments. Everybody is thinking of what they could do when they are out of their house. So is there a way that you could run some simple contests where they can share their happy moments where they last traveled? do an online picture competition or do a competition where people can share their skills. Uh, the way we are doing an online engagement now, if you could do some of these formats, that can really make uh, a lot of employees who are far from work, who are really feeling unsecure, uh, to be far more motivated and engaged. Ashish, I just want to share a, a screen for a while to just show some things which we do. Is that possible now? Uh, yes, yes, you can do that. Are you able to look at my screen, Ashish? Yeah, we can see that Excel file is there. Some other which is my invisible. LinkedIn page is coming. So, so, so yeah, so, so this is this is was some simple thing invisible, Ashish? Yes, yes. So, so simple things like uh, is that uh, we can enable some savings for the employees, help them save some extra money. Is that possible? Can we run some specific, uh, a town hall is possible when you are doing in the office. Can we run town hall, which is an open house town hall? Can we really do it meaningfully well? Can we do a place where you do something like an online yoga session? Can we do a place where you are able to post some of these picture competitions? And, 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 and can you really help do this pat on the back in a lot more simple manner? Uh, where where people are able to feel that they are being socially recognized, they are being appreciated. So so that's 
something which I wanted to share up and uh, these are some of the tools which we internally have been doing. I would recommend some of these uh, to be used because trust me, uh, uh, what works best, uh, what, why will a customer stay is because your employees would be happy, your employees would be engaged. Uh, thanks, Ashish. Okay, thanks, Sumit. So uh, let's take some question for Sumit. Uh, you know, Sumit will tell us the secret uh, on employee engagement. Let me see if somebody has posted. Pet on the bag, I liked it, Sumit. Basic to be followed, you know, regular communication with the team member. Guys, any question for Sumit? Let's quickly take. I will go to the QA section as well. Okay, uh, Sumit will move on because. People will sure. be posting questions. There's one person posted, what are the tools? I'm not sure whether related to speech. Ashish, do, we, do I answer? You are moving ahead. Uh, no, the, so that was just mentioned. Uh, what are the tools? Is there is there any cost involved in this activity and XYZ? I think it's related to the same what you just shown, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I, I think uh, the uh, the uh, the agenda was not to really uh, speak okay. about, uh, but I, I, I meant it that uh, it's important to use some tool, uh, whether you yeah. use a Zozo day or something. Uh, I think a communication tool is what's required at this point in time. Uh, and for the benefit of some people who asked it, uh, we are really looking at uh, that. Uh, so so at, at Zozo, we are actually offering a three months complimentary to every organization who is using this tool. So that's something which we think as a simple step for us to offer it to the HR leaders to go through these uncertain times. But there are other tools which could be simple tools like a Slack or a Flock, which can be used. Or you could use a simple WhatsApp and create a group. And if there's a way that you could run that competition over there, I would recommend that as well. So uh, open, open any channel which you could. Uh, it can be emails as well but open a communication channel where you are able to effectively appreciate people, praise people, do some online, uh, com do some online contests and make them feel comforted at home. Okay. Great. So, so see, I think, yeah, the, there are messages in uh, chat box. Uh, your team can also look into this. Please share the email ID so that some people can reach out who like to know more about this. Yeah. Great. So, so thanks for being there and thanks for supporting this. The fourth one we cover, as I said, you know, 35 countries, 30 speaker, global speaker, and you know, this is the talent show also happening now. Thanks, okay. Ashish, for content, conducting this. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure to have with you guys. Yeah, we have around four, 450 audience right now. Okay, more will be joining soon. Okay, so now we move to the next one. So that is from uh, Bangalore. We are moving to Bangalore here now. Okay, so here is a, here is a gentleman with, uh, with whom, uh, not with whom, but uh, with his brother, I, I meaning HR Shepherd was in touch and uh, they supported a couple of events and that was uh, in Bangalore and this guy is from uh, different. Uh, Rex, you are there. Let me see as Rex uh, drop out. Okay, I will get him here now. Sorry. So different, uh, different supported couple of HR Shepherd event in uh, in, in Bangalore and, and remember there was one exercise which was on uh, uh, mouth organ and uh, uh, if you know people in Bangalore if you know Oscar De Silva so here is the Rex De Silva who is the brother of Oscar right Rex? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm the older one. Older one great Rex so we are yeah. looking forward Rex introduce yourself quickly and start your performance. Yes yeah I'm Rex De Silva and uh, I represent uh, Difference Consulting, uh, expansion team building company based out of Bangalore. Uh, at Difference, we specialize in employee engagement and most of our activities, we involve music as a tool. Uh, and uh, yeah, harmonica symphony, where we teach people how to learn to play a harmonica in half an hour, you know, is one of our activities. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. From India, I'm moving to another country now. So that okay. Let me come back now. Performance uh, point of view. Let me see where are we. Okay, I think yes, yes. So we will need to wait for Sushant and Hemlata. If Ashwajit is there, we will take Ashwajit. But before that, uh, let's see if we are able to hear. Uh, uh, we want to see uh, a speaker from Zimbabwe. Are you there? Let's do the audio check. 
Yes, I'm here. Ashish, how are you? I'm I'm fine. How are you? Okay, yes, great, great. I'm so, trying to start my yeah. Yes, uh, you are there, right? Okay, let me post your uh, detail on the screen. So performance, guys. Let's wait. Let's see here. Now we come back to our knowledge sharing session, and I'm posting here is the our next speaker detail. Trish Jassi, she is GMHR Goes Holding Private Limited. She is from Harare, Zimbabwe. Over to you, Trish. You like to hear employee engagement during work from home? Thank you very much uh, for the invitation to participate in this great webinar, and we have been braced with such beautiful. Beautiful music and dance there. But yeah. just to get right onto it, uh, as you've said, my name is Trish Jassy. I head the HR department for Doves Holdings. So Doves Holdings is a business that has four SBUs. Uh, we are into uh, coffin manufacturing. We are into life assurance policies. We are into funeral insurance. And we also have a bureau de change. So we are an, a, a company with about uh, 700 employees. So now when this started, you know, we were all not prepared and we knew we had to come through and quickly uh, put uh, strategies in place to be able to engage your employee during this um, unprecedented times. So what we've done is we've increased uh, our communication levels. As business, uh, we're used to having meetings because we're all together in one place. But because now we are not having to work together, we've in increased our platform uh, in, which we're in places where we can engage. And we've uh, gone all the way to even uh, forming WhatsApp groups for managers, WhatsApp groups for different leaders. And we've also set up uh, a lot of digital platforms where we can actually meet online to discuss issues. So for us to ensure that um, everyone else is connected, we give each other weekly deliverables. So now on these weekly deliverables, we tell each other what people are supposed to do, and then we are supposed to report weekly. This ensures that the guys remain engaged, regardless of the fact that they are not at work. So we've broken down our strategy, shared amongst ourselves, and we have to continue giving each other feedback on what we're doing because the business still needs to go on even after uh, the COVID. So we've been doing a lot of issues just to make sure people remain engaged and remain uh, in conversations on key business issues. Apart from increasing communications on emails, on uh, Microsoft Teams and Zoom, we've also been able to form what we call various committees. The purpose of the committee is really is to make sure that different departments interact. So now you have a person from HR working with guys in marketing. The purpose is for the person to have a complete understanding of the business during this time. So these committees are, are running with uh, different projects. Others are running with uh, corporate social responsibility issues. Others are running with sustainability. Others are running with safety. So we are spread out. And each person, then each committee has to select its own chairperson. That then reports to the rest of the management on what we're doing. We found that it's been very helpful. And we found that uh, it's, it's bringing teams together. And guys are actually getting to connect more than we were in the workplace. Uh, what we've also done is we've put in initiatives to show that we understand uh, what our people are going through. Look, we're in the business of the funeral services. And because we're in funeral services, it's essential. Guys have to continue going to work. So as guys have to continue going to work, you know, there was this atmosphere which had developed of, or of them and us, us having the frontliners going to work. And you know, the trauma that they have to go through because of their uncertainty, that look, we could be working with people that are infected. So we've had to reach out to them individually. So what we've done is we've uh, done guided talks every morning, safety briefings. We've had to do safety briefings. And these briefings, uh, we're talking of and uh, sharing information that's factual and actual to our staff. In that regard, people are not having to hear fake news. So we're assuring them that we care 
And we're also making sure that they're protected from a safety perspective, ensuring that we speak to them and know that we are not afraid of them, but we are with them and we're supporting their cause. So we've been engaging them daily through even safety briefings, through conversations, they explain to us their experiences. It's not been easy, but uh, we've had to do these things. And uh, yeah, the business is going and we've had to move to social platforms and digital platforms so fast so that we're able to continue because after all of this, the business needs to go on. So these are some of the initiatives that Dove's Holdings has taken uh, on board. And I'm sure my time would be up to take some questions, Ashish. Yes, very much. I think you completed on the time. We have a question coming for you. How can we maintain the same touch level as home, vice versa office, when the employee is not in front of you or in the organization? Okay. So for us, um, like I've said, when it comes to trust issues, it's having real conversations, talking to people about what their experiences are, especially the guys that I work. When you speak to them and you express uh, your concern and they share their experience and you try to get information from them that they can assist you in actually coming up with the policies that uh, protect them. Because remember, these are the guys in the front line. So our mandate is to make sure that no employee gets infected. Also, what we've done is that in the event that they get uh, affected, we've put in what we call quarantine homes or isolation centers, where if they are not able to go to, to their homes because of various reasons, maybe they cannot isolate in their homes, they are sure that the company will provide to them accommodation whilst they're going through this. And the company is also collaborating with um, COVID centers such that when we, we can assure them that if they do fall ill, because it can happen, that they will be attended to. So that's what we are doing to ensure that they know that they are protected and that we care for them and we'll look even after them, even if the unfortunate is to happen. We've got what we call group life assurance and their families will also be able to benefit. So it's a whole process that we've put in place. Okay, great. Let me see if uh, any other question coming uh, uh, for Trish. Uh, okay, uh, in the chat box, uh, let me see. Okay, no question coming, Trish, but be there uh, because there are some input coming in the chat box and Q&A session. Uh, okay. It's, a, it's a common question, which let me repeat and quickly you touch upon. Uh, can you share some list of engagement activity in this current scenario? Uh, thank you, Ashish. So in the current scenario, like I've said, we are making sure we're doing what we call daily briefings. And in these briefings, we're talking about the current situations that, are, uh, that our teams are experiencing. And we've also done what we call weekly reviews to look at where we started, to look at the objectives that we've set in the week. And then people are responding with the, with, in terms of the execution issues and what we've implemented. So in that way, we know all the employees are, are on board and are participating even though they are working from home. So in essential, we have created what we call routines. And these routines are able to ensure that people are still working, even though they're not at work and they're not working because they're afraid to lose their jobs, but they're working because they want to ensure that the business continues to live even through uh, these pandemic issues. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so uh, yes, there are some input coming. Please go through. It's uh, one is related with KPI evaluation. Mm -hmm. So please uh, respond on uh, chat box. Okay, that is coming from Sumit. Yeah. Okay, let me move on now. Uh, thank okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Amit, uh, we will be just taking you after one performance uh, because uh, of some issues. Please be there, Amit. We'll just take you. Are, are you there? Sangram, I will just come back to you. I know you are pinging. Amit. Uh, yes, I can hear you, uh, Ashish. Okay, so here is Amit. Amit is a uh, HR head based in Ukraine. Uh, he's worked for Dr. Reddy Lab and uh, he's a good friend of uh, not only me, but uh, HR Shepherd. <laughs> so Amit was based in Mumbai, Delhi. He keeps roaming around the world. Amit, over to you and like to hear employee engagement during work from home. 
Yeah, sure. So uh, before I go to employee engagement, first of all, Sushant, thank you. Uh, uh, wonderful tunes and uh, very uplifting. And uh, uh, in these times, uh, if if I really talk about this whole scenario, I think uh, my my way of looking at it is every company is still trying to figure out what is the best way forward. And uh, honestly, nobody has an answer. So. instead of talking about uh, company specific things i would probably talk about a few general things and uh, then open up to questions so first uh, i think uh, this is a great opportunity for hr uh, as a function to really uh, provide impact and value uh, which previously uh, didn't exist so this is the real opportunity that hr has to bring that uh, similar to what finance got in 2008 in uh, Lehman Brothers crisis. This, uh, uh, as we have all seen now, the importance of data and how data can make an impact. Uh, uh, the way we are tracking numbers across countries, and uh, today everybody is thinking more data. So it's also how HR can bring about uh, value from data. A uh, lot of what we are trying to do at work uh, is unprecedented and. not uh, done before so in terms of uh, whether it's work from home for all employees uh, most of the industries had never never even thought about it so it's it's uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, bring in a new normal at workplace and uh, make some changes which are lasting and at the same time establish uh, better work practices uh, in place so Uh, so i heard previous speakers talk about uh, meetings uh, schedule about uh, for a daily meeting and weekly meeting i think over a period of time uh, more than meetings uh, uh, i believe we'll have to start trusting employees giving them that empowerment to believe in what they are doing and ensuring that uh, uh, it's meetings are not just about a weekly check or daily check but ensuring that uh, people are contributing to what they are supposed to contribute which in turn will put a lot of pressure on how do we define work and how do we manage work so those are the real challenges and opportunities uh, in terms of uh, what it presents to hr uh, ashish in a, in a nutshell okay i mean that was so quick and uh, yes uh, good to cover all this point uh, let me see uh, any question coming uh, okay because uh, we were waiting for let's see one message uh, here okay no uh, so amit uh, be there there may be some uh, question will be coming you can pick up from the chat box or we'll take it on the screen yeah thanks sure, amit for joining so joining i'll just uh, drop drop out for a bit and i'll uh, rejoin. rejoin i have yes, a meeting yes, and i'll come back again yes please most welcome thanks amit thank you so, thank you everyone so nice of you Okay, now we are moving from Ukraine to India, and that's Pune now. And here is the uh, dear friend of HR Shepar, Sangram Pawar. He is a HR head of uh, COE, and he had a lot of position uh, attached to him, which he can tell in a quickly. He is based in Pune, work for HR Central. Over to you, Sangram, and let's hear what you want to show us. Sure, sure. Uh, are you able to uh, hear me, uh, Ashish? Just wanted to confirm. Uh, very much, Sangram. Great, great, great. So, uh, thanks, everyone. You know, it's really uh, uh, first of all, I like to congratulate uh, Ashish to you and the whole team here, because this is a very innovative uh, way of uh, doing a webinar. First time organized such a way that there is a knowledge sharing session as well as uh, there is an uh, engagement from from other angle as well. because we talk about engagement, but is a very different way of engaging people on the on the webinar so thank you very much uh, ashish and uh, uh, my name is sangram and uh, i am a corporate head hr for atos central uh, and uh, head of uh, hr hr coes uh, in, in and then based on mumbai but uh, i am stay in pune so now in the in the lockdown i am in pune hey sangram that was so nice of you i'm sure you see the comments okay 